Hello, and welcome to Watch This Rundown, the podcast where we explore the cinematic universe one ridiculous question at a time. Um, we're so glad to have you here with us. I am your host, Hunter, joined by my co-host, as usual, Nick. And for the first time ever, we are actually face-to-face, well, not face-to-face, but we're recording our faces so you can see what we look like. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how this goes. Um, this will be, if you are listening on Spotify or Apple uh, Apple Podcasts, the video version will be available on YouTube, so you can go check it out there. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be available on Spotify or not, but we'll be uh, trying to do that. I'm not sure how that works, but we'll figure it out. Anyway, welcome back. It's, it's been... Rappers can get on Spotify. We can get on Spotify. <laughs> Yeah, that. Um, anyway, this is going to be our first video episode, and we haven't recorded in a while, so this is going to actually be season two. Um, on top of that, we had an intro to the podcast. It kept getting copyright claimed, um, even though it was a free. If, even though the sound was a free sound, I kept getting copyright claimed, and I'm sick of fighting it. So. We're not going to have the intro anymore, um, which is unfortunate, but maybe we'll come up with something again in the future. But for now, we'll go intro list. And the episode well, today, I know, well, you know, I'm sick of having to fight copyright strikes every single video. So, um, so welcome back. And we kind of start off with a... Uh, what we've been up to sort of thing, but it's been several months at this point since we've recorded, so we've both watched a yeah. lot of movies and stuff since we've last met up. We're, like, invincible. We just take forever to come out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we've, I've, we've both been watching Invincible. Uh, the finale just happened to put a bit of a timeline on the podcast. Um, pretty mid. Pretty mid? What do you mean? I don't know, dude. I just feel like that second half of Invincible was kind of mid. I disagree. I mean, the last episode was fucking awesome because of all the parallels between Mark and Nolan. But Yeah, that was awesome. I saw a video of the two being put side by side as they're like... I think you actually sent it to me. You sent me the video. Yeah, I sent it to you. It was was a cool video. uh, Invincible, uh, it was Skybound who sent that. It was a cool video. Produce a show. Um, so I guess we'll kind of skip the updates because there's so many different movies and shows and stuff that have been out since the last episode. Um, just to throw some out there, uh, the Percy Jackson show came out. The Echo show came out. Oh. Um, yes. I think last time we recorded, Barbie and Oppenheimer had just come out. So since then we've had lots of big movies. Wait, what, and what did you say? I think Barbenheimer had just happened, like right as we had finished, like the last we did episode, episode we made in October. When did Barbenheimer? We, we did Halloween uh, stuff because remember we changed our whole platform to. No, um, I know, I know that. But when did uh, when did Oppenheimer come out? Oppenheimer came out in July. No, it did not. Yeah, huh? Me, you, and Peter went and saw it in IMAX in July. Was it actually July? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow, my timeline is July twenty eighth. Okay, well, my timeline is off a little bit then. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, either way, it's been a while, and there's lots that's been massive. Oh no, Hunter. What? You went mute for a minute. Can you, you hear me? Can you see me? We're good, though. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you and see you now. You just went blurry, and then it, you cut. I was like, oh, no, he's dead. Um, somebody called me, which was quite uh, rude of them, but I don't know who they are. So, um, no. anyway, Dune Part 2 came out. That's going to probably be the biggest movie that's come out since we last recorded. And <sighs> I... Biggest movie that has been Dune Two, <laughs> um, which I personally loved and 
cannot wait to watch it again. I have not had a chance to watch it a second time. I've, since Dune 2 came out, watched Dune 1 two more times. Dune ain't for me, bro. No? I don't know. I, uh, we watched the first one together, and I, it was pretty mid. But that's also because we uh, watched it at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning. It was morning, super early, and, yeah. <laughs> well... I thought Dune 2 was phenomenal. It was an instant 10 out of 10 movie for me. I think I have like five movies rated 10 out of 10. Dune 2 is one of them. Really? I mm. really liked it. I thought it was fantastic, and I am very excited for Dune Messiah. If that's what they call it. I wonder why it's not just called Dune Part 3. Because it's a different book. Oh. There, there's the book Dune, and then the second book is called Dune Messiah. But I think Dune 2 was phenomenal. I think that Timothy Chalamet deserves his uh, deserves his flowers because that was a fantastic movie and his performance was incredible. I think even if you didn't like the movie, you can't deny that Timothy Chalamet killed the role. Yeah, he was pretty good in it. He was pretty good. And that one edit of him goes pretty hard. Which edit? The one of him like... Where he's like Willy Wonka, and then, and then he like, and it switches to Oh, oh my dude, but my trainings. <laughs> Whatever he says, um, he kills it. I love that movie. It was very good. Anyway, this episode is going to be about future nostalgia. So, what movies that are currently coming out or have just come out or maybe are coming out soon will be looked at with a uh, scope of this movie is a classic, sort of instant classics, I guess you could say. Um, Things we'll look back on in the future and be like, that was something special. So I guess just to get us started, I think Dune 2, maybe not Dune Part 1, but Dune Part 2, I feel like we'll have sort of that future nostalgia like when I was watching that movie, I knew what I was watching was something special, and it felt the vibe felt very unique to a lot of other movies that you kind of just go and watch. You know, like at least for me personally, Empire Strikes Back to Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. I don't. Know, I feel like I felt like Oppenheimer and Barbenheimer was a time in cinema that everybody kind of was just like rallying like this is going to bring cinema back i liked oppenheimer but i didn't love oppenheimer and if i, I feel like barbie. you hated barbie bro barbie I was great it barbie was great barbie was yeah, a phenomenal yeah. movie oh. it was a fun movie i liked it very much <laughs> it was overhyped <laughs> I think that Dune 2 is better than both of those movies by far. I think I was expecting to go into Oppenheimer and be absolutely blown away. Like, oh, everything was done practically. It wasn't. But it it didn't have the resignation I thought it would have. And I saw it on the um, 35mm IMAX reel. Like, I saw it the way you're supposed to see it. I thought it was great. I didn't think it was as impactful as I thought it would be. And I felt more of a connection to Dune Part 2. Maybe it's because I like sci-fi more, but I feel like future-wise, people aren't necessarily going to look back and be like, oh, I gotta go watch Oppenheimer again. You know? Mm -hmm. Whereas Dune Part 2, that's like a movie where people are like, oh, I cannot wait to go back and watch Dune. I just don't think Oppenheimer has the same sort of vibe to it it's kind of like when people say like what movies should always play in IMAX you know Dune Part 2 is one of those movies that should just always be playing in IMAX Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what do you think is a future nostalgia movie for me probably Sisu yeah Dude, that movie was so good. I, so I don't think it gets talked about enough. I don't think anybody <laughs> talks about it, honestly. Um, oh, that movie makes you. That made me feel something too. That was a great movie. <laughs> that was really good. I didn't even know what I was really going in to watch. We just went in there to <laughs> I was watch like, it. "Hey, you want to see the this movie, Sisu?" 
<laughs> and then I was like, damn, this is one one of the best movies I've seen all year. <laughs> it was good. It was very good. I, I like how he didn't say anything, like, the whole movie, but you still felt his, like, you understood pain. what type of person he was and the type of pain he was going through, and yeah, I thought it was great. I had a great time in that movie. I agree. Yeah. Uh, that movie was really good. If you haven't and seen yeah, Sisu, he, he, it's like John Wick, but with Nazis. And gold. And gold. Nazis, gold, and... And weird. the dog doesn't die. <laughs> The dog didn't die? No. Because oh. we left, like, we got in there, we're oh, like, oh, right. the dog is going to die. Off. And then we're like, the dog didn't die. That's right. The dog ran off. Yeah. Yeah. Sisu is a good one. It is. Um, good. One that I think also kind of fits this mold is Top Gun Maverick. Did you watch Matt uh, Top Gun Maverick? Yes. You didn't like it? I do. It's just over talked. Like, oh my god, Tom Cruise. Oh my god. Miles I Morales. love Tom Cruise. Miles Morales. Miles Miles Morales. <laughs> I love Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is the best actor of all time, in my opinion. What? You did not just say that. I did just say that. No. <laughs> he is my favorite actor. I love every movie he's in. What? Have you seen uh -huh. um American Made? No. It's with Tom Cruise. It's so good. I just watched it uh, early, like mid last month. And it's Tom Cruise as a pilot. And it's actually based off a true story about a pilot who basically oh, was hired no, by I the CIA. That. You did see it? Isn't that the one with Jack Nicholson in it too? I don't think Jack Nicholson is in it. Where he's like, you can't handle the truth. No, no, Jack Nicholson's not in it. No, it's basically Tom Cruise plays as a pilot who basically made a fortune smuggling drugs for, uh, I think it's Pablo Escobar. Mm -hmm. um, it's based on the true story about how this pilot would work for the CIA and his job was to fly over these foreign countries and take pictures of, like, different military bases that they have. And while he was doing that, he was landing and smuggling drugs back to the States and making a crap ton of money for Pablo Escobar. It's a very good movie. If you haven't seen it, it's very good. But it's Tom Cruise, and I don't know, I think Tom Cruise is... A phenomenal actor. I very much enjoy all of his movies. I have been on a Tom Cruise spree lately. Like, I recently watched this year, I watched American Made, Valkyrie, Top Gun Maverick, Jack Reacher, Jack Reacher 2, Top Gun, uh, what else? Is that all of the, top, the ones that I've watched of his lately? Yeah. But I've been on a Tom Cruise kick. But I think Maverick was phenomenal, even if it is uh, kind of stealing Star Wars' thunder. Bruh. It basically is Star Wars. At this point. Well, I mean, the whole story is, like, they're literally trying to sneak into a military base that's super hard to get into, and the odds are super slim, and they have to get a bomb into a tiny little hole to destroy a base. It's literally Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is Star it's, Wars. It, it's Star Wars. Everything's a Star Wars now. That's okay. I like Star Wars, so. Oh, like Fast and Furious. Why? I was Fast and Furious Star Wars. What do you mean, how was Fast and Furious Star Wars? They went into space with a Honda Civic and blew up a satellite to save the world. But that's not Star Wars. Anybody oh, going to space, just because you're going into space doesn't mean it's Star Wars. They went up into space to destroy a big object that was going to destroy their planet. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that really a hard? big object. It was a normal-sized object. 
mm. ish. Mm. I don't know. Um. Okay. I think it's your turn. Oh. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Would you like me to go and you can continue thinking? Yeah, you can go. Okay. Um, did you watch The Creator? Yes. You did? Okay. I don't I... Think See, okay, here's... I thoroughly enjoyed it. I liked it a lot. But I think okay. that it is more impactful for filmmaking. And it's setting a new precedent for how films can be made. Maybe mm-hmm. it's not future nostalgia where you look back at it and like be like, that's one of the best movies I've seen, blah, blah, blah. But how they actually film the movie is very unique. And they saved a lot of money how they did it. They literally went to foreign countries and they recorded these people just doing their daily life stuff. And a lot of times when you're doing recording and you have to put CGI characters in, they have like the body suits with all the dots on them. Well, in the creator, they didn't do that. There was no mocap. There was no dots on people because they wanted to make it feel as authentic as possible and make the robots feel like it was part of the world. So instead of having just anybody be a robot, they made it so that they can make anybody a robot anytime they want, whoever they want. So if you have like a big scene of like a crowd of people just like walking you can then pick who you want to be the robot, who you want to kind of make it so that the robots feel more integral to the world. Like there's a scene where this person was just sifting through like grains with their hands. Mm -hmm. And normally that scene to turn somebody into a robot with a mocap suit and they're using their hands to go through this grain. That's just a waste of money because there's no purpose in it. But really, they just recorded a random person going through some grain, and then they turned him later into a robot. And in most situations, that doesn't really give any sort of vibes. But in a movie where you're learning how robots are just part of this world and they are very human, you can make that feel very human because it was a human. And it doesn't have to be done before the fact with like planning, because when you plan it, you don't necessarily get the natural human emotions and understandings. So Mm -hmm. I think maybe it's not future nostalgia where you look back at and say, that's something I want to watch again, but I think it's going to change how movies are going to be made in the future and how things can be, don't have to be done in the way they've always been done. And people can be willing to try new things, which is really cool. And ILM should not have allowed that movie to happen because they, could have lost a crap ton of money based off of how they went about it. But it paid off because the movie did very well and it was very good. Mm -hmm. Did you think of a movie? Yes. It hasn't come out yet, but Beetlejuice 2. You think Beetlejuice 2 is going to be... Beetlejuice 2 is going to be a big movie. I feel it. It's Tim Burton returning with Michael Keaton and Winona Ryder, Jenna Ortega, and all the original cast. It's going to be a big movie it's gonna be a big movie plus the fact that it's called beetlejuice beetlejuice is genius yeah and then the next one's beetlejuice be beetlejuice Beetle, beetlejuice, Beetle, beetlejuice. Beetle, yeah. yeah i'm i'm excited for that i think that i think that that could be uh i could think that could be a big movie i mean it's, the first one is iconic in itself so if they well, can yeah, even live up to the fear of halloween without seeing a beetlejuice thing exactly so <laughs> if they can live up to the hype of the first one i think it it could be pretty good uh, Especially um, with the cast. I don't think the cast would come back unless they unless knew it was, was going to be good. Like, oh, yeah, I know. It, it's it's going to be a, I can't wait to see it. I'm going to be there day one. <laughs> opening yeah. night, baby. I don't know if I'm going to be there opening night, but Riley loves Beetlejuice, so we'll probably, we'll probably be there. Um... You know, one that, and I forgot to mention these ones, I we also watched all of the Mission Impossible movies in the last, like, two months. Um, I think all of those movies hold up very, very well. Even the first two, third one, don't talk about. Or, sorry, second one, don't talk about. Second one's meh. Um, first three are good. 
Second one, not good. Um, but the newest one is mm. such a good movie. Like you, f- you just feel so much emotion throughout that whole thing. I'm so mad that they killed off our one of the best characters, but um, I think that the action was great. I think Tom Cruise's stunts are just. Nobody can say that Tom Cruise isn't incredible based off of just what he does. He literally jumped off of a mountain on a motorcycle into a parachute. That's insane. Literally just for that scene, it's iconic. You know? Yeah. Like, there's a different... I feel like there's a difference from jumping out of an airplane in, like, an oxygen suit, which he does in the one before that or whatever, the one with Henry Cavill. There's a difference between doing that and jumping off of a mountain with a motorcycle. I don't know. I mean, when you're jumping out of an airplane, at least you're really high up off the ground and you don't have the opportunity to mess up or something. You're jumping off of a mountain with a motorcycle is insane. I I think that was... uh, Good movie. I think every Marvel movie of Endgame and before are all going to be movies people will go back and watch. I don't think the new MCU is going to be things people go back and watch. Besides No Way Home. Maybe... Have you ever came across and be like, you know what? I'm going to rewatch Falcon Winter Soldier. No, I would go back and rewatch WandaVision, I think. And I would rewatch. Black Widow. I wouldn't rewatch Black Widow. Yeah. I would rewatch. So forgettable. I would rewatch Hawkeye. I watch. I rewatch Hawkeye every Christmas. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I rewatched uh, the Marvels. I like I liked that one. Um, only because of Beast. Only reason why I went and watched that movie. That's dumb. Um, I, I, mean, I think that I would agree where pre-Endgame is very, like, peak Marvel. And I don't think they've gotten back to that yet. I'm really hoping they come back to that with Deadpool. I think we're... Oh, Deadpool 3. It's going to be iconic. That movie is going to stick around... And I, records. it's going to if it doesn't destroy break records. records. Yeah. That's one of those movies that's going to be very future proof. Yeah, the, the cup, cup of Deadpool Cinemacon? and uh, Wolverine with this cowl. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. my God. It looks cool. Yeah, no, it looks good. They gave him white eyes and everything. I'm so excited. I think, I think that's one of those movies that's gonna hold the spot for a very long time. I mean, even all the Deadpool movies, honestly, are kind of like that. I don't know. There's just something about them that is very unique and hasn't really been replicated with superhero movies. Yeah. And I think it's just because Deadpool's Deadpool. And I don't know. I don't think you can really compare any other character to Deadpool as much as they try to. Mm -hmm. I think... I think when Deadpool, the second Deadpool three trailer comes out and the tickets go on sale, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna buy IMAX tickets like right away, so they do not. For sure. Out. I hope that they re- really say um, AMC popcorn bucket of Deadpool, or a Wolverine. I mean, they probably do Deadpool though because he's got a full mask. Yeah. But well, well I mean, they did the Batman cowl for. I know. I have it. Yeah, because I gave it to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess speaking of the Batman, I think the Batman is probably the best Batman movie. And I I love the Dark Knight. Uh, I am I think uh, that I, I think not expect you to say that. I think Heath Ledger's Joker is the best Joker, and I don't know if he will ever be topped. But I think as a movie, the Batman is the best Batman movie. Uh, it just gets Arkham so right. It gets his vibe oh, so right. It what? It gets Gotham right. Like, That's it's what just, 
yeah, it gets everything. It's, it just feels dark and gritty and dirty and filled with crime. And I hate how they literally just turned it into Chicago in the Dark Knight. You know, like you go from yeah, like, like the Batman Begins was so good. The Batman then, Begins like, was a very good Gotham. Then all of a sudden it's Chicago. Like where did Gotham go? I, bruh. Yeah, Christopher Nolan, they got really lazy with that one. They did. I mean, I love the movie. It's still one of my favorite movies of all time. Mm-hmm. Which is weird. It's hard to say. It's weird to say I think the Batman is a better Batman movie than The Dark Knight, but The Dark Knight is still one of my favorite movies of all time. And I wouldn't say The Batman is one of my favorite movies of all time. I don't even know if that makes sense. No, yeah, I get yeah. Like, I would go back and rewatch The Dark Knight over and over and over again. And I'd watch The Batman repeatedly but the dark knight just it's very just holds a place in my heart where i just love that movie i think that it's the best representation of the joker and i speaking of joker joker is a good movie that okay that might be one too okay so the, the joker the first one i liked it as a movie i have not gone back to watch it and i don't think i would go back to watch it it why it's so good it's so just messed up i don't know it's supposed to be messed up i know it's supposed to be messed up but i actually saw this comment on twitter where it was like i it was like i think that joaquin phoenix's joker should be in the batman universe and Uh. and it was reposted, and the person was like, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker does not have that dog in him. Like, <laughs> if you're, if you're going to have the Batman and the Joker, the Joker needs to have that dog in him. Like, he needs mm-hmm. to be able to, like, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is just a dude who's super messed up and ended up falling into this role of being an icon that he didn't mean to. Whereas... Every other kind of Joker is like monster, gangster, anarchist, like actually trying to do something. And Joaquin mm-hmm. Phoenix just accidentally did. And yeah. I don't know. I feel like he, if it was him fighting the Batman, he would get destroyed. Like he would have not stand a chance. Whereas any other version of the Joker, I feel like you, he's going to be more of an adversary. And Joaquin Phoenix is just kind of a crazy dude. Mm hmm. You know? No, I get that. So, as a movie, I can respect the Joker. I can respect it for how it created the environment that it did and for the vibe it's got behind it and how it presented itself. I can appreciate it. But it's not a movie that I personally would go back and watch repeatedly. And it's not a movie that I look back and feel fond memories of watching. Mm -hmm. Like, as I was watching, I'm like, I don't know if I'm enjoying this. I respect it for the movie and for what it was, but I did not enjoy watching it. And I want to enjoy watching a movie. Yeah. You know? I feel that. Mm Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. Hmm. You got one? Yeah. Um... Have you seen Talk to Me? Talk to Me? It's a horror movie. Let me see. Talk to It came out me. last July. Um, and... you know, I think Riley watched that one without me. I think she had her sisters over and they watched it, so I don't think I watched it. Which it means I probably nice won't end up watching it. <laughs> it is one of the The ending got me i didn't know what to think of the ending because i didn't know what was going on until like a certain thing happened i was like whoa because i watched it with cj Mm -hmm. uh about a month ago and the first time or for the first time yeah i didn't watch it when it came out because i didn't have any interest in it and nobody wanted to go watch it so i watched at cj's house and he had to rewind it to show me what he was talking about and that movie is such a mind, hmm. like, it messes with you. And I'm just like, whoa, that's an actually good psychological horror movie. 
and we haven't had that in a long, long, long time. Yeah, I feel like a lot of movies are not psychological horror movies, and they're more just regular horror movies lately. There's, I can't remember the last time you watched a psychological horror movie. I think the last one I watched was... Did you watch Infinity Pool? Yeah, with me and Goth and... The that Hardball. movie was so freaking weird. Yeah. I, I would know. say that's psychological horror, but that movie was just so messed up. That was kind of fucked up. We, we watched... So I watched that with me, Riley, and two of our friends. And yeah. it was the people we saw Star Wars with in theaters. Um, okay. And we were just like... What is going on? <laughs> uh, it was it was a strange movie. That was a messed up one. Yeah, I think I, I feel like a lot of these movies that I watch have like the same director, and I think Denis Villeneuve, however you say his name, uh, guy who made Dune. Yeah, have you seen any of his other other movies? No. Okay, well, he's come. He just makes movies that stand the test of time. I feel like his movies are just so good, where it, you just want to watch them again. Um, so he made Blade Runner, twenty forty nine. Oh, okay, then first off, one. that movie is just. It's one of my favorite movies ever. It's just the aesthetic that it creates, the how the way it picks up from the previous movie. Mm-hmm. I don't. I know a lot of people who really liked the first one didn't really like the second one. Yeah. I'm in the boat where I watched the first one so I could watch the second one. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really like, I mean, I didn't dislike, I didn't love the first one. Mm-hmm. I thought it was sort of boring and obviously it was a bit outdated just visually. I feel like if I had watched it when it was, when I was younger, maybe, or when it, first came out which i wasn't even alive then but i would probably appreciate it more Mm -hmm. but 2049 i just feel like was such a beautiful movie its environment was incredible the acting was amazing and i love how the story kind of just goes in a direction you wouldn't even expect like at at the end how he's like not even actually the hero and Mm -hmm. you don't really get that very often um, but he, his movies are kind of just, they, they sit with you and they hit, um, prisoners. Have you seen that one? Yeah. That's also him. He yeah. has, he has a way that he makes movies that just, if you know, it's him, you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense that that's him. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing with like Sicario or Arrival. Those are also I'm him. Shaman. I'm not I'm, on movies or the same movies. I don't, I don't like M. Night Shyamalan. Did you know that he did The Visit? Yeah, I did. I did not know that. I was like, wow, I am, now I know why I don't like I, this movie. I haven't seen <laughs> The Visit, um, but ever since The Last Airbender, I just can't. Like, I can't. <laughs> yeah. Last Airbender, The Visit, ca- Knock at the Cabin. I've heard... Oh. That people Old like knock so at the cabin, stupid. but I just can't watch it. I can't. It's not. It's not even worth my time. No, it's not. It's not worth my time. Or old. I heard, old just looked creepy. Like not even creepy. Like not, creepy. Not even creepy. Not creepy as in like it looks creepy. Where it's like, it, like a creepy person. Like it's you're you're a creep. So like you're gross. Boring. Like. It was so boring. It doesn't look creepy as in scary. It looks creepy as in like uh, you know, like when a person's a creep. It gives that vibe, but a movie. This is exactly what that movie is. <laughs> That's the vibe that movie gets. Oh man, I don't know. I just I'm not a fan of M Night Shyamalan, and I've I've watched some of his interviews, and he just is annoying to me. Yeah, he kind of reminds me of Flash from Spider Man. Like yeah, the <laughs> yeah, the new Spider-Man movies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tony, whatever his name is. He's so annoying. I don't. I like the actor, but I yeah, his character though. Like as actor. no, he was in Scream Six, and I was so happy that he died. I was like, oh, this is so crazy. I love it. He was in, uh, I think, 
French Dispatch. And oh the movie God. itself was so boring, but uh, his character... also in... Uh, what did we just go watch? What one did we watch? Um, not the French Dispatch, but the other one. What, what was his latest movie? Uh, Wonder City? Not Wonder City. Oh, uh, Astros, Asteroid City. Asteroid City. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Asteroid, Asteroid City. Yeah, he was in Asteroid City. He was, yeah. Uh, you, you, we liked that movie. We left it going like, I'm not sure what really happened, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was all right. It was definitely better than Pla- French Dispatch. Yeah, the French Dispatch was just weird, and I only liked one of the stories, kind of, in the French yeah. Dispatch. Was it the Timothy Chalamet one that you liked? No. Yeah. Okay, no, yeah. it was. I think it was. I think it was. Like I think it, was with the old lady. <laughs> it was the artist guy. Oh yeah, and then I, they got pissed off because they couldn't take the. Art. They couldn't take the wall. Yeah, that was, and then they like ended up putting it in a plane or something. Yeah, that was like my favorite one, is because the artist was like, "Eh, fuck you." <laughs> yeah. I think. I like. Did you watch Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio? You need to watch it. It is yeah. so good. I don't know if you like stop motion. That's all right. So, did you watch Isle of Dogs? Yes. Great movie. Um, I mean, it's I'm not going to throw all, all the stop motion movies out there just because there's so many of them. But it's a stop motion movie of Pinocchio made by Guillermo del Toro. And it follows actually kind of a different story of Pinocchio a little bit than the original. And this came out the same year that Disney's live-action remake with Tom Hanks came out. Don't watch that movie. It's so bad. There's a live-action Pinocchio with Tom Hanks? Yeah, it's the newest one. It came out last year, and it was awful. I Pinocchio. they took all their live-actions to the theater. Did it not go to the theater? I don't think so. I think it went straight to Disney+, Plus because it was really bad. <laughs> Um, it's um, Pino- Pinocchio doesn't even turn into a real boy in the end. What I know, it's a whole point. What, what does he do? He just says wood. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's stupid, and it was boring and not well made. It just wasn't good. But Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio is very interesting. Um, it takes on kind of a more of a. Uh, sort of like a spiritual sort of vibe where Pinocchio actually dies a couple times and it takes place like during World War II and the puppet maker is like this guy who like is like a carver and stuff and he just like gets bored and makes it one day and then he like ends up having to like fight in World War II for a little while and he's like at a World War II camp. It's wild, dude. It's a good movie. It's very different, and I only watched it once, so maybe I'm misremembering some of the plot lines, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Ewan McGregor is Cricket. Okay, maybe I will watch it then. Um, but it's it's very good. I highly recommend it. I think it's a Netflix. Um, yeah, it's a Netflix. It's a Netflix original. Uh, I have the poster for it, too, which is cool, because it came out in theaters, and I got the poster for it. Yeah, you gave me a, that you're because you got two posters. For oh, I did give you one of them, didn't I? Yeah, it's a, you gotta watch it, dude. It's a good movie, and it really like if I'm ever going to want to rewatch Pinocchio, that's one I'll watch because it's very good. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. You have any other movies? Hmm, not that I can think of. Did you watch Mad Max? Fury Road with Tom Hanks or Tom Cruise, Tom Tom, Tom, Tom Cruise, Tom Hardy. <laughs> Tom, oh my god, there's too many Toms. Too many Toms. Tom Hardy. Yeah, I did see that one. Did you like that one? It was pretty good. I like that one a lot. I think it's going to hold up very well for a very long time. And I think the thing about movies now is they've reached a point where they can get better, but they're at a point where they're there's not really a crazy next jump. Like, we're at the point where our cameras are already so good where you're not going to watch a movie that's coming out now in 10 years and think it looks aged. Whereas if you watched a movie now that came out 10, 15, 20-ish years ago, you can tell the quality difference. Mm -hmm. You know? And so I think it's harder to say what movies are going to 
be like nostalgia ish because they are all going to look great forever. Mm-hmm. Where and it, so it doesn't necessarily paint a nostalgia picture. Whereas movies you watch that are twenty years old, they look a little bit. They look older. There isn't as good of CGI. There isn't as good of visual graphics. Like you're not looking at a 4K recorded project. You're looking at something that was recorded on a shitty camera before they had 4K and knew what that was. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. So I think that movies now are going to look about as good as they're going to look forever. Obviously, Avatar 2 is like, I'm going to take things to the next level. And I feel like it does. And you can see that with how it does its CGI. And like, you can see the water simulations and stuff like that. Like that stuff is always going to continue to get better. Um, Mm -hmm. Did we talk about how, have you ever, have I ever talked to you about the Mary Poppins camera? Mm -hmm. So did we talk about that on the podcast or did we just talk about that? We talked about it on a podcast a few okay. episodes ago. Yeah, so they that technology of the Mary Poppins camera was lost. They made this crystal thing that would separate the lights so you didn't have to use a green screen or a blue screen. You would use a certain light, which would emit a certain color, which is very small compared to like this wide spectrum of greens or wide spectrum of blues. And yeah. so it allowed them to basically use like a veil and you could see through the veil and still have the background be there without having to do any comping or cutting out that technology which was lost was just recreated so for 30 years that technology has not existed and everybody's been using green screens blue screens and doing digital comping and cutting and snipping and overlaying you don't have to do that anymore because Corridor Crew, I don't know if you, I think I've told you about them before. I'm not sure if you've ended up watching any of their videos or not. Yeah. But Corridor Crew had a guy reach out to them and say, hey, you know that camera that was made by Disney that was lost? I recreated the technology to do it. And they tested it and they compared side by side green screen versus using that technology. It's night and day. Hmm. Like, it's so much better than green screen blue screen and it's easier because they don't have to do any cutting or comping it's very cool so Hmm. visually movies are going to stay relatively looking the same but i think our cgi is about to take a giant leap especially after avatars 2's release like it shows what can be done like the scene where you he's like putting the strap onto the water creature and the water flows over his hand and it saturates into the leather. Like that's all CGI and it's incredible. Mm -hmm. And obviously it took a crap ton of money to do, but I think that it just shows what's possible and it shows that this is what we're on the verge of being able to do, making these super hyper realistic CGI models. And now if we can incorporate that with not having to use green screen, blue screen, I think that movies are going to take a next big leap with Mm -hmm. digital or uh, cgi effects and stuff but i don't think it's going to be something that's going to shock everyday viewers because we're at the point where things are going to always look good Mm -hmm. that was kind of a rant but i thought that was really cool and really interesting and it literally just happened like last week um any other movies you can think of that are test of time movies? We can kind of rapid fire some that we think are sort of test of time. We don't have to discuss them. Halloween. Just 2018 Halloween or? Yeah. Okay. I, I feel that. That movie was a great. That one's one that I feel like you, everybody's going to be watching horror, like during it's, Halloween it's, season. It's, I don't know. Halloween 2018 takes the vibe of Halloween and just puts it in it and it actually makes it feel like it's a fall Halloween movie. Yeah. So that movie gets like the October Halloween, vibes. Yeah. Like yeah. if you go back and watch Halloween like H2O, that does not feel like a Halloween movie. That <laughs> looks like you just filmed that in the summertime and just put up a pumpkin decoration. Fair. Um, Knives Out. I think mm. that movie is just such a phenomenal whodunit i've seen about other whodunits i've recently watched like a haunting in venice good movie 
but it does knives out just is like a next level and i've held disdain in my heart for ryan johnson for star wars but and i so i didn't watch knives out when it came to theater because i had a disdain for ryan johnson that movie is incredible i very much enjoyed it glass onion was also very good not as good as knives out but still very good yeah i didn't like glass onion as much as i did um knives out yeah knives out was just still just very had, good but it's a it's, better cast yeah uh, um or jamie lee jamie lee curtis mm-hmm. yeah yeah it was a it was a phenomenal cast um what else what else stands the test of time oh um the Justice League, not the Justice League, the Suicide Squad. Yeah, J- James Gunn's Suicide Squad movie. I could watch that movie Superman over and over is again. Gonna be good. I think Superman is gonna be one of these movies that stands the test of time. It's gonna Superman is gonna be one of the greatest superhero movies of all time, and nobody's ready for that. I nobody's agree. Ready that nobody's talk. ready for that talk, but I'm ready for that talk. It's gonna be so good. I am very excited. Um, the only thing I have an issue with that movie is that he keeps casting his friends. I don't care. They will do good, and that's fine. His friends are his friends because they're good at what they do. Yeah. Um, what else? I'm running out of movies to think of. You know, the, I think The Greatest Showman is one of those movies. Yeah. You saw that movie, right? Yeah. Okay. It was all it's, right. It's one of the, like if you if you're a fan of musicals, I think The Greatest Showman is one of those movies that people will go back to watch over and over again. It's very very right. timeless, and I don't know. I love that movie. I thought it was great. Yeah, it's pretty okay. Um, this one is a bit. I think uh, some people will highly disagree, but Ready Player One, the movie. Or, no, that's a good movie. <sighs> okay, that's but if, a, really a lot movie. of people who read the book didn't like the movie. I read the book, and I love the movie. I have, From a lot of other people that I've heard who read the book, they did not like the movie at all. But as somebody who never read the book, I think that that movie encompasses kind of what we're talking about right now, honestly. That movie is this episode. It's nostalgia to be nostalgia, and it throws it in your face. And... It's like what what move if I was to like explain what this episode is, it's what movies are going to be in Ready Player Two. You know? Yeah. If they ever come up come out with it. They are. It's already been confirmed um that uh he's returning to direct the next one. Spielberg. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm. Well it's been forever i feel i'm gonna like. watch ready player two tonight I th- or ready player one tonight i think it's on netflix so i'm gonna watch yeah, it i was gonna say it's on netflix <laughs> i like that movie i'm gonna watch it <sighs> maybe <sighs> riley doesn't want like watching that movie because her sister watched it like a million times <laughs> so maybe she's not gonna want to watch it Ugh. who knows but i think that's this but... episode encompassed in a movie is ready player one and that's that just that... our next episode Books what movies? movies? Oh, books versus movies. That's fair. I mean, how many books have you read? <laughs> a lot. Okay. <laughs> Movie wise, a lot. Okay. I'll have to look up what movies to books I have. Seen. It doesn't even have to be movies. It could be TV shows too, like Walking Dead and Invincible. Oh, I haven't read those comics. I you have. keep tell- you keep having to bring me Invincible, but keep canceling on me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, honestly, I, I can't think of really any more right now. Uh, the parts of the Caribbean movies, just throw those out there. The first three iconic will forever be iconic. Uh, I, the last two. but <laughs> they're, fun, they're but... supposed to be making a new one. That's supposed to be a reboot. I probably will not be watching. Did it? Yeah. The when Margot did that happen? No, canceled. not a Margot Robbie one. There's a different one that's coming out, which is going to have, uh, a a female black lead, which I'm fine with a female black no, that, lead. Yeah, but... that one got canceled. Yeah, I thought it was just announced that it was happening. The, the Margot Robbie one got canceled, and then they announced that one, and then that got canceled. Probably because of everybody's 
like frustration like no it's yeah. not pirates without johnny depp so literally it, johnny depp made that movie if you bring back johnny depp i will absolutely watch it even if you don't bring back johnny depp do a will turner movie because it was will turner's story it True. was his story yeah no i'm cool with that they, they teased that he's, he's literally time. he's literally like davy jones now like follow his story of like getting the souls and no, he's not Davy Jones anymore. They broke the curse in the last movie. In the third, in the third one, in the f- fifth one. Oh, did they? I I don't even know if I finished it. Yeah, they broke the curse. Hit all the seas curse at the end of the movie, so he came back and lived with Elizabeth. Uh... And the end credit scene was Davy Jones, like the actual Davy Jones, like going for Will. Bill Knightley. Yeah. Hmm. So. And Interesting. We haven't seen anything since. And we won't. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm out of. I think I'm out of stuff. But I, I think there's there's movies out there that are just they're they're going. There's new movies coming out soon that are going to hold a place in our hearts, and there's movies that have come out that uh, do hold a place in our hearts, and I'm excited to see what the next ones are. Yeah. Um. But thanks for listening. If you are watching and this is the first time watching, don't do that face. (laughs) Um, Thanks for watching. And check out all of our socials. Give us a like or a subscribe or a a follow or whatever the button you can press is. Please press the button. Um, And thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Peace.